Welcome to Market Roundup, 28th July 2019. I am Sagar Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. The company is based in Singapore and I live in Thailand. Before I begin, let's go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we we'll look at oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. In general, when swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the market's direction. We'll study that using NASDAQ and NYSE market bread and market ETFs technical analysis. In addition to aligning the trades with markets direction, we like to align them with industry strength. We'll study that using industry scorecard. Along the way, we may review some of the recent examples from Traders Forum. You may also visit the Traders Forum from our homepage. It is open to the public. And we'll look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because using this template we can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. This week, oil dropped. The weekly backdrop candle color is bearish. The shape is also bearish. It is inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart. In the daily chart also, it is inside a wide triangle pattern. Earlier there was a memory support line at this level. That support was broken and price fell further. There was no Q swing trade opportunity. If you looked at the memory being broken, you could use the Q fine tune template 5 minute chart to take precise intraday short trade in US oil. In fact, USO displayed the bearish headwind one day earlier. Looking at that, you could start to be ready to take a short trade, probably using the intraday charts. Such a short trade ended up with considerable profit. Gold ETF GLD Earlier, gold went up strongly. For the previous three weeks, it was moving in up-down, up-down fashion. That move was clearer from the daily chart. Looking at the gap-up moves and the gap-down moves, at that time I mentioned in the webinars that it was not safe to take swing trades in gold. This week, the weekly backdrop candle color turned neutral and the shape is also indecisive. In the daily chart, price initially went up and then on Friday, it came down with an inside candle. On Thursday, price went up with high volume and Friday, it came down with equally high volume. Friday 
gave us an extreme bearish pressure day. Price is close to the upper boundary level. It is in an uptrend. We are not going to short it now. At the same time, looking at the extreme bearish pressure and the indecisive weekly and the Friday candle, we may stay away from taking any long trade as well. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index weekly charts along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. In the last webinar, I mentioned that bearish headwinds are appearing in many instruments in market breadth, in market ETFs, and also many major stocks. This week, both NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index displayed bearish headwind in the weekly charts. NASDAQ closed below the watermark resistance level. NYAC is just at the watermark resistance level. They both are continuing to remain in an uptrend. However, the fact that the bearish headwinds have appeared and it seems to be creating false upside breakouts, it is time to be cautious with long positions in the market. The market internals are also bearish. Other than new high low, all the internals declined and closed below zero. New high low is still remaining positive. That is expected because the market was at or close to all time high. When that happens, new lows take time to expand. And therefore, it is normal at the market top that we will continue to have new high low positive for a while even as the other indicators the advanced decline and up down volume are starting to show signs of weakness. Overall we can say that the market trade trend is remaining bullish however bearish headwinds are appearing therefore we have to be cautious and the internals are bearish overall. Let's see what is the picture from the market ETF analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY. In the weekly chart, it is still in an uptrend. However, the weekly displayed bearish headwind signal. It closed just above the watermark resistance levels. If it can fall little bit more next week, then it will complete a false upside breakout. In the daily chart also, we have a bearish headwind signal. So far, that is the peak of the price move. On this Red traffic light candle, it could break below the memory support line. Then price tried to go up, touch the memory support line and fell down again on Friday with high volume. Friday's candle color turned bearish, magenta, and the shape is also bearish. When price breaks below a memory support line and goes back up to the memory support line and starts to fall down, that gives very low risk shorting opportunity using intraday chart. Let us draw a line at the memory support level on Friday and change the template from this daily entry template to fine-tune intraday 10-minute chart template. Now we can see that 
price open with a gap up on friday price open above thursday's high this green pivot was thursday's high and on friday price open at the blue pivot level soon after that the early range high and early range low lines form the daily memory support line was at this level then price fell below early range low on this candle and that drop was with a bearish shape candle as well that gave us a gap short opportunity the entry would be at this price level and stop would be just above early range high you could take the short with more confidence because it was also reversing from the daily support line that was broken at that time as price fell down and hit this pause pivot level you covered more than the risk distance and at least partial profit could be booked as price continued to fall down at the end of the day you had larger profit on the remaining position this is a very effective technique of shorting stocks or etfs from the broken memory support level but the actual entry is done using fine tuned 5 minute or 10 minute chart nasdaq etf qqq bearish headwinds are appearing everywhere here also we have bearish headwind signal in the weekly as well as the daily chart the weekly backdrop candle color turned neutral and it created a false upside breakout in the weekly chart in the daily also price closed below this watermark resistance thereby creating a false upside breakout and price also broke below trend line support friday candle shape and color both are bearish and friday price dropped with high volume overall it is still continuing to be in an uptrend just like spy however the appearance of the bearish headwinds and the breaking of the memory support are going to result in caution if we are holding long positions russell 2000 etf iwm this is the only market etf where the weekly backdrop color has turned magenta bearish and the daily traffic light candle color is red that is also bearish this is the only one of the four market etfs where both the weekly as well as the daily colors have turned bearish this was the weakest of the four etfs and it is continuing to be same relative performance line tilting down is also showing that it broke a memory support line this week there is another memory support line but that is some distance away if you were going to short any of the four market etfs then iwm was the best candidate and it is still the best candidate for shorting we studied the market breadth and market etfs if you watched my last one or two webinars you would know that at that time i mentioned that bearish headwinds were appearing everywhere however the memory supports were still holding that has changed now now the memory supports are broken for many of the etfs you could see this gradual weakening happening in front of our eyes if we use the q systems regularly and that gradual weakening is very evident from the sector performance as well in the last market round up i observed that though the market went up sectors were starting to weaken and they have weakened further this week 
here we are studying one month sector performance the red bar represents performance of the current week green bar performance of the previous week and blue bar performance of two weeks before that this week nine of the sectors decline some with significant percentages very large percentages only two sectors went up and they went up by very small percentages one week ago we could see the weakening happening because though several sectors went up many sectors also came down and two weeks prior to that most of the sectors were up only real estate was down watching the sector performance using the sector graph or using the scorecard you could see this weakening happening in front of your eyes in real time let's observe how the sectors weakened over time using the scorecard and heat map here we are looking at the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days and 5 days. Cyan color represents strength, magenta represents weakness. This scorecard and heat map shows how the sectors are doing now. Materials and consumer staples are the strongest. Communication services and energy are the weakest. They also show how the sectors are transitioning from weakness to strength as in the case of materials or from strength to weakness as in the case of information technology. The pace column shows acceleration deceleration. You can see that information technology though the score is in the middle in terms of deceleration it is the second weakest one if you are holding long positions in infotech sector you may protect profit or book profit and you may start to look for shorting opportunities as information technology was strong earlier in fact it was the strongest in recent periods the shorting opportunities could give you short the top opportunities if you are looking for long opportunities you may look into materials it is not only the strongest sector this week it is also the most accelerating sector sector level tends to be quite broad similar to the market level to make more accurate trading decisions you may drill down into the industry level buy into strong industries and short into weak industries this is the industry scorecard and heat map we saw that material sector is the strongest sector and most accelerating sector as well it is no wonder that many of the strongest industries are in material sector and you can see that many of them were weak earlier and now turning into strength that is true for copper aluminium that is true for steel that is also true for fertilizers and agricultural chemicals gold on the other hand had been strong for quite a long time so the best buying opportunities may not be in gold now gold is strong you can still look for buy setups but they may not be as lucrative as the buy setups you could find in copper aluminium or steel for example because these three industries were weak earlier the stocks are expected to be at a lower price level probably undervalued stocks probably with even high earnings growth and those are the stocks where i like to look for buying opportunities 
let's drill down into the stocks of these three industries copper, aluminium, and steel. If we sort them by five day performance, we can see many of them went up by significant percentages this week. Let's focus on the stocks that went up by at least 1.5%. Out of them, several are of optimal valuation, undervalued stocks. Shown by the cyan color under the valuation column, we can apply the smart filter to look at only them. We are left with five stocks. Now, if I sort them by double clicking on the latest quarterly earnings growth, we find three stocks that are undervalued that are having excellent earnings growth and two of them also have short squeeze potential. They all happen to be in the steel industry and the material sector which is now the best performing sector and also the most accelerating sector. What did we do? We carried out a top-down analysis. We looked at the sector strength, found out materials to be the strongest, most accelerating. We drilled down, we found several industries in that sector, including steel. That is strengthening now, one of the strongest industries. And then further drill down to find out undervalued stocks with robust earnings growth. These stocks tend to give the best buying opportunities, not only for swing trading, sometimes even for long-term investing. The last step would be to look at them using technical charts. I have set my technical trading system to Q Global. Therefore, I can simply click the chart icon here to open these three stocks using Q Global. This is X US steel. It is still inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart. If we can break out of this triangle pattern and probably also break out of the next memory resistance, then we could look for a buy setup. If the price is already overbought by the time this breakout happens, we may wait for a pullback and then for the price to go up again. That would be the first trend following go with flow trade setup that we will have after this very long downtrend. The next stock is CMC. Isn't it beautiful how the Bullish Shadowin could capture the very bottom. Right after that, or probably on that day, it displayed extreme bullish pressure. Next day, it had a gap up day. When price went above the high of the gap up day, you could take a long position using the concept of buyable gap up and buying the stock when price goes above the high of the buyable gap up day. Your stop would be just below the gap up candle and as price went up, hit the yellow direction line, you had more than risk distance covered, you could book partial profit and hold on to the remaining position. The last stock in this list is AKS, AK Steel. This looks pretty interesting to me. Let me review this with the complete at a glance template. AKS, in the weekly chart, it tried to go below this watermark support level but went back up above that level, creating a false downside breakout. The false breakout happened with 
extreme bullish pressure and this week again it went up with extreme bullish pressure in the weekly chart the weekly backdrop candle color is bullish the shape is also bullish and the relative performance line is showing that it is outperforming the market though the market dropped a bit this week AKS went up in the daily chart it was inside a triangle pattern in this area it created higher high deep down and then gave us a cyan color candle at this point the memory resistance was reasonably far at that time you could take a long position right at the close of that candle putting stop below the memory support line and booking partial profit at least when the memory resistance was hit on friday that would be a go with flow trend following long trade setup the first such setup possible after this long downtrend what about as of friday's close on friday it broke out of the memory resistance line with a bullish shape and bullish color candle with above average volume an extreme bullish pressure you could consider friday as a breakout trade setup day because it broke out of the memory resistance out of the triangle pattern with extreme bullish pressure if you did that where would you put your stop if you use the recent low that might be far away instead you could apply stop using q protection signal as of friday's bar which would be somewhere here if price comes down and hits that stop it will show that the breakout is failing and you may exit with a smaller loss instead of waiting for price to come to the memory support line we carried out a complete top down analysis using color coded systems with a few clicks we could find very attractive buying opportunities where the sector is strong industry is strong the stock is strong fundamentally and technically it is giving a low risk buy point if you were looking for shorting opportunities you would carry out the same exercise in reverse that is you would look for the weakest industries either the ones which are already weak for a while or as i tend to prefer the ones that were stronger earlier but weakening now if you are following me in the traders forum it is open to the public you would notice that i mentioned about railroads or transports in general weakening in recent periods that was and still is a warning signal and you could start to look for shorting opportunities in railroads or other transportation industries at minimum to protect profit in any existing position you might have you could use this top down analysis to look for both long opportunities as well as shorting opportunities let me summarize the market was very strong it made new all time high just a while ago however there were bearish headwinds everywhere q traders are always cautious when they see that bearish headwinds were in market breadth weekly daily charts they were in market etfs weekly daily charts and also in many many stocks looking at that q traders would start to protect 
or book profit in existing long positions, especially if the headwinds were appearing in their specific stocks and they could start to look for shorting opportunities. In the one or two previous market rounders, I observed that bearish headwinds were there but memory supports were still holding. That is not true anymore. Many of the market ETFs daily memory supports are broken. The same gradual weakening is evident from the sector scorecard heat map as well. Most of the sectors are down this week. One week ago, several were down and several were up. It was a mixture and prior to that, more sectors were up than down. You could see this weakening happening in real time and make your trading decisions intelligently. Though the market is starting to weaken, it is still in an uptrend. Will you look for buying opportunities now? Not in the industries where they are weakening, but you could start to look for buying opportunities in industries that are moving in reverse to the market, that is, industries that were weak earlier, like materials industries and starting to strengthen. And we could find several attractive candidates like that using the top-down analysis. You could also start to look for shorting opportunities now. If the market goes down, then the shorting opportunities will be very lucrative opportunities because you can short the overvalued stocks in industries that are weakening at a very high price level. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.